Welcome to our dynamic personal development web show with a big difference for me. That's because I'm not bringing you just one expert, but two on a subject that if you're following the BTV network, you'll know is a personal favorite of mine as the host of the Conscious Business Show. This whole web show is given over to the dynamic duo who have just released their book, Introducing the 10 Terrains of Consciousness, Understand Yourself, Other People, and Our World. My guests today from Australia are Alan David Reed and Tani Wolf. Welcome to both of you. Thank you, Malcolm. We're so happy to be here with you. Hey, Malcolm. It's wonderful to be here. Thank you so much for inviting us on your show. Yeah, and you'll be having all the benefits of the sunshine, and we haven't had any this summer. I don't know. Let's get on with it. <laughs> this special web show is in three parts. In part one, Alan and Tani will tell you what the 10 Terrains model is and we'll describe the five terrains that are most important for business leaders to know about. In part two, they'll tell you how you can utilize the 10 terrains models to create greater cohesion in your teams and to improve your market success. And in part three, they'll explain how the 10 terrains model can help you to map current and future trends. So, over to you both. Well, thank you, Malcolm. I want to start by saying for any business leader, understanding a terrain is vital in getting the most out of your business and to uh, be able to communicate with your markets and your employees and your management team. A terrain is really a perception that gives rise to our values and our beliefs and really our whole world. If you can imagine someone having a colored pair of glasses, that's how they're seeing the world, through that terrain. And there are 10 parallel terrains. They're like parallel universes. And being able to understand where everybody is sitting in this continuum of terrains is vitally important in order to be able to be most effective in your communications and to, and to really create harmony with, within uh, your entire organization. Terrain is really the, the, the foundation to everything. And, and consciousness is a, a term that, as we were just discussing, often used in many different ways. And how we're defining consciousness is actually the, the core of reality. And if we look at the, the latest in quantum physics and understanding the universe we're living in, it's a conscious universe. Everything is connected to each other. Everything is listening to each other. So with that foundation, what we're looking at here is how each person is relating to reality and viewing reality from that place. Yeah, and I would say that another way to think about this is you could see them as 10 different operating systems. You know, someone's using a Mac, someone's using Windows, someone's using Linux. They've just got a totally fundamentally different way of seeing the world and it affects the way they think, the choices they make, the kinds of work they do, the kinds of products they buy, the places they go, the activities they do, the kinds of health modalities they're drawn to, the kind of choices they make in their life. And, and essentially, it's where we're at in our personal growth journey. So um, these terrains are actually, they can sh you can shift from one terrain to the next as you expand in your journey, your mind opens. Kind of think of like a ship that goes up in the air and from the ground level, it just sees the trees. And then as it, as it lifts a little bit higher, it can see the trees and then the ocean behind it. And then it goes a little bit higher and it can see the trees and the ocean and the planet. And then it goes up into outer space and it can see that there is no borders. <laughs> and, and so each of these are a different perception so it's not that one's better than the other, it's just that they're different. So as someone grows in their awareness, they might expand from one terrain to the next and they're really seeing the world in a completely different way. And what's really fundamental here is that each of these terrains have their own language, their own memetics. And that's really fundamentally important because if you imagine speaking French or, or German or English, in order to be able to communicate into each person's listening, you have to understand the language they're listening to and listening for. So by knowing where someone's at, by knowing your terrain and the terrain of others around you, you will be able to more effectively say words and say things that they will hear because you'll be using language that they can relate to. And this is, this is so important to effective communication because you could be talking from one terrain and saying things in the way you see the world and see reality. And, and they're just gonna look at you with, with a blank look because they, don't, they, they can't hear you. They don't really get what you're trying to say to them. So effective leadership is really understanding effective communication and, and communicating into each of these different worldviews, these different paradigms, because they are 
fundamentally different paradigms and, and different uh, viewpoints into, into our world. So because this is a short show, we thought we're not going to run through all 10 terrains today because that would take a long time. The first couple, the, the matter-based terrain particle and the faith-based terrain radial, there's not very many people at those terrains. So for the listeners, you probably won't have people in your market or your audience that are at those terrains. And then the last few terrains, the fractal-based terrain toroid, the unity-based terrain infinity, those are the terrains of kind of mystics and sages and enlightened masters. And you're unlikely to probably have those people in your immediate environment as well. But there's five terrains that are more in the middle where you're going to meet a lot of people at those terrains and they may be buying your products, they may be some of your employees, and it's really helpful to understand how they see the world. So I'll just run through those five that you're most likely to encounter. So I'll start with the will-based terrain pyramid. We've got the, the symbol of the pyramid there. This is a terrain that is very much coming from a kind of wild west mentality. These are people who think the world is a dangerous place, everyone's out to get me scarcity mentality, victim mentality, and the way that they feel safe is by gathering as much wealth and power to them as they possibly can. And that makes them feel safe. And often these people are coming from self-interest, instant gratification. How can I keep myself safe, my family safe? And they're not really thinking that much about the common good of the majority or the, the way the culture and the societies function. They're really acting out of self-interest. The terrain after that, the order-based terrain square, which is where a lot of people are at in our world and some countries are actually at, uh, because each country can have its own terrain when you gather up all the terrains of everyone, there's like a prevailing terrain. So where, where we live in Australia, the prevailing terrain is actually at square, the order-based terrain. So at this terrain, people are really believing that their sense of safety comes from being part of a well-oiled machine, being part of a civilization, a society with law and order and institutions of government and educational institutions and banks. And people at Square will tend to follow authority, they'll tend to follow the law, and they're really focused on how can I contribute to my society? How can I follow a well-trodden path and be an upstanding citizen? And they tend to very much buy into the consensus reality. And then the terrain beyond this, the reflection-based terrain diamond, which is really where we would say the Western world is at overall in the prevailing terrain at the moment, and a lot of things we're seeing in our world coming out of this, is that at diamond, the big shift that happens as someone moves from square to diamond is they start to feel like, I'm actually, I'm actually able to decide who I am. I'm not going to do just what my father told me or the university told me. I'm going to strive down my own path. I'm going to forge my own path. I'm going to decide my identity, my gender, my art, my expression. I'm going to come up with new technologies that push over the square and innovate the square and expand. I'm all about growth and expansion. And a lot of the things we're seeing in our modern world, like inventions like the internet, they've all come out of diamond, the reflection-based terrain. It's very much a terrain of identity. And the... The, the most uh, amazing thing in, in Diamond is the mind and human ingenuity. It's really human ingenuity that is keeping us safe when we're coming from this terrain. So there's a lot of people at Diamond at the moment or moving into Diamond at the moment in the Western world. And then the terrain beyond that, we call that the connection-based terrain, and that has the symbol of the circle. There are some people at that terrain, you probably will meet people at Circle, not as many as Square and Diamond, but you will. And these are people who've really had a, usually a huge transformational journey in their life. And they've come to a point where they're very much connected to their heart. They've moved from fear to love, from doing into being, from head into heart. And they're very much in deep connection with the earth and nature. You see a lot of things like biomimicry and community thinking, and we're going to care for all the vulnerable members of our society. And it's very much about connection and collaboration and living a simple life close to the earth. And then the terrain after that, the coherence-based terrain spiral, you might meet some people there, maybe two, two or 3% of people will be at spiral. Spiral is a terrain where people have a very multidimensional awareness. So at Circle, we saw a real connection to the web of life throughout all the planets, the animals, the species, and the people. At Spiral, it spreads out to the whole cosmos. And these are people who have more of a multidimensional sense of self. And their whole journey is about staying coherent, really fully in alignment and in resonance at all moments. So that's really a short run through of just five yeah. of the terrains. And when we invite any of your listeners to go to our website at tenterrains.com, and I'll spell that T-E-N-T-E-R-R-A-I-N-S.com. <laughs> and you can take a quiz there that will help you get a very good understanding of where you're at in this continuum. And uh, also there's a report available that you will be able to look very deeply into that place and understand yourself much better than you, you may already 
Mm, brilliant, Alan. Thanks, Alan and Tony. I'm really getting into this, by the way, because I can see how important it is to the conscious leader of being aware of themselves uh, and their place in society and what they're doing, but also understanding their people and their suppliers and their buyers and so on. It, it's so, so important, this this complete change that we've undergo undergone there, and you're spot on on time. And so, and now I'm looking forward to you telling us how the 10 terrains model can help us run our business more effectively by creating greater cohesion in our teams and better targeting our markets. Over to you. Well, thank you. We can look at success as alignment. Uh, imagine a rowing team. Obviously, if you've got a team rowing all different places and, and the different speeds, you're going to be all over the shop and you're not going to clock very well. If everybody is really in alignment and everybody's working in harmony together, you're going to go far. So you've got to understand not only your terrain and understand where you're sitting on this continuum and how you're creating reality from that place, but you also have to understand the terrain of those around you, especially in your C team, because this is fundamentally important uh, to be able to communicate within the leadership. And then, of course, the culture, the corporate culture is the prevailing train of your company. So all of the employees, how they come together, create a prevailing terrain, and, and that gives rise to your corporate culture. So having all of these be in alignment and having the same set of values and beliefs is, is really important because then you look at your product and your markets, and they also have terrains. Your markets certainly uh, have have a terrain depending on who you're, you're focusing to and your products is as well because each of these terrains value uh, differently. And so for some terrains, people at some terrains are gonna value your product more, others may not see its value so much. And if they don't, understanding how you can communicate the value to them is gonna be vital. So overall, this is important because your success Determined, is determined by how well you're ticking all of these boxes and really coming into, you know, aligning all these circles up so that, that you're, you know, spot on like an arrow uh, into, into the particular markets you're aiming at. And a lot of corporations already understand the value of understanding their employees. A lot of them have looked at personality types, Myers-Briggs, DISC, things like that. And, and those are hugely valuable and I highly encourage people to understand that stuff. But this is actually something that runs deeper than personality. It runs deeper than our upbringing and our, and our social values. It's actually our core relationship with reality. And it really goes deeply to what makes someone feel safe. And so if you're the sort of company that's already studying the personality types of your employees, trying to organize and give them jobs that really suit them, it's you're going to love this because it's going to mean you can understand your employees much more deeply and you can check that, that these employees actually really resonate with the product you're offering, you know, that, that the management team actually resonate with the product you're offering and that the product you're offering really resonates with the audience and the market. And so one of the things that this really helps you with is with your marketing. So if you really understand the terrain of consciousness of your market, let's say your market is at diamond and they're cutting edge thinkers and, you know, and they're all about pushing over the square and innovation and how much can I grow and expand? I want to forge my own path. I don't want to make my own career choices. And then you sell them a really mainstream product that, that is totally coming from the consensus reality. They're not going to buy it. So you really need to understand what your audience is and then market the product in language that they can really get. And so one of the things that happens when people read the 10 terrains book, introducing the 10 terrains, or, you know, start to watch our videos and learn about this is you start to realize that very different language resonates with people at each terrain. And it's incredibly helpful for getting your message correct and for branding and just speaking into the listening of your audience for real cohesion and just effectiveness so that your product will really sell. And so that, as Alan said, all the circles will line up, the audience will get it, the people working for you will feel passionate about the project because it aligns with them deeply on a deep level. It's not just a personality level, it's, it's a much deeper level. So, you know, everybody working on this project will be passionate about it. They're in alignment with it. It resonates with the audience and you've got the effective communication tools to land with them. I, I can truly see the value because as in marketing, we encourage people to know 
know the persona of their customer, know the persona of their market and everything, but you're doing it very, very cleverly. You're going deeper so that you're, you can be much more effective and avoid waste. And especially in these changing times, I can imagine uh, some people may be in different, uh, you know, straddling terrains as well, because as they come to terms with remote working and, and that sort of uh, area and then they're back into their office. It, it's, it's absolutely fascinating. It's great. So great. Now we've got why it's so important to understand our own terrain, the prevailing terrain of our company, and the terrain of our market. Now let's discover with you both how the 10 terrains model can help my viewers to map current and future trends. Well, as I indicated a moment ago, there is what we call a prevailing terrain. And that is, that is the the sum total of all of the individuals in a particular group. And that group could be a family, a neighborhood, uh, a, a region, it could be a nation, uh, it could be uh, certain parts of a country, certain groups. So, you know, demographics can be, be modeled many different ways, but that group is gonna have what's a, called a prevailing terrain. And it's really the, the sum total averaging of all of the individuals. And so by, by knowing this, you're going to not only see what is current, but because the system, because the, the terrains were, were you know, moving slowly as a collective toward uh, unity as the uh, unity-based terrain, infinity, there is a movement happening over time. We can see that as we've come in the last, oh, several hundred years on the Industrial Revolution, we've been at square. And that has been happening for, for quite a long time. But as of the 60s, we've actually started to move in various places more quickly than others. Uh, the UK is probably still at square moving to diamond. Australia is still at square moving to diamond, but probably a little bit more quickly. In other countries such as the US, they actually have moved and crossed the event horizon into diamond. So by knowing where that group is at and, and that country is at, uh, you, can, you can see what values and, and beliefs are, are current and, and then understanding that this, this model, everything is moving in one direction and it's, it's moving collectively in one direction. You can anticipate what will be coming in the next decade or two or 10. Uh, and so this is important to be able to map your, your evolution, map the journey, because as we are seeing now, uh, certainly in, in many of your audience will get this idea that we're moving to what's known as vertical markets. And the reason that's happening is because we're coming out of square, which is a collective terrain. And these terrains, they alternate between masculine and feminine, individual and collective. There's a whole number of, of different things that are happening inside of each one in, the, in terms of the energy and the math that's happening. So with an understanding of moving from a collective to an individual terrain, no longer can a Model T be one color and one shape and size and be sold to everyone. Now everybody wants to have their own color, their own shape, their own size. They want to be able to customize it. They want to make it specific to them. That's because we're moving to a, a terrain of uh, a reflection-based terrain, a diamond, which is about individual identity. And so everybody wants to have in fashion and create their own identity. So you can, you can see how these trends are moving based on how we're moving into these different terrains. And as I indicated, various groups will be further along. Some groups now, even in the US and in other places, are at diamond moving into circle. And so their sets of values have actually shifted. And with the, the current uh, pandemic situation with COVID, that's actually caused the planet to start to take a, a movement now to a, to a new uh, place. So all of this is factoring in and, and has to be uh, looked at very closely. And you can see that the, the kind of trends that emerge, emerge naturally and, and, and inherently from the prevailing terrain of any culture at that time. We can see that looking back through history, as we've been a radial and we've been a pyramid and we've been a square as a collective, at the moment, as Alan's talking about, the kind of collective gravity of our culture, especially in businesses and technology, is that diamond, the reflection-based terrain. And a lot of things that, that have been dramatic changes in the last 20 or 30 years have been as a result of that. For example, the move from centralization to decentralization, which is mostly seen in the existence of the internet, instead of finding out all our information from one encyclopedia that had an official stamp on it, we now get thousands of sources of information. That's that the wide dissemination of information is a key example of the shift from square to the shift to diamond. 
And if you had understood the 10 terrains model back in the 1960s, you would have known what was coming because it can't not happen. When a terrain shifts, the things that necessarily, the social systems, the economic systems, the technology that emerges is going to be very much reflected in an, an expression of that terrain. So, you know, we can see that for countries that are still moving from square to diamond, if you really hone in on these kind of new kinds of technologies, disruptive technologies like Uber, decentralized technologies, customization like Alan's talking about, that's all the stuff that's really important to someone at Diamond. They want individual expression. They want choice. They want to have, they don't believe authority. They want to make their own decisions and use their own education and their own mind to make their choices. But what's happening is with what's currently happening in the world and the major crisis that we're all experiencing with COVID and all the other things happening in the world, it's actually the very, very beginning baby steps of us as a culture being forced to start the long journey to move to the connection-based terrain circle. And the connection-based terrain circle, if you start to understand that, you'll start to get some obvious ideas of where things are going to be heading in the next 40, 50 years in terms of business. It's going to be much more closer to nature, simple life, much more connected, less disconnected technologies will be bringing us together rather than apart. A lot of stuff will be based on biomimicry and, and, and harnessing the power of nature rather than working against nature. And instead of dominating nature, we'll be working with nature. And instead of coming in individual competition with each other, we'll be working collaboration and harmony. So the kinds of workplaces are gonna change, workplace practices are gonna change. Uh, so many things are gonna change out of that kind of deeply based reality that's about connection, collaboration, connection to the self, state of being rather than doing in connection with nature. And that may all sound a little bit out there, but there are some alternative communities in the world where the prevailing terrain is at circle and they're already modeling this kind of housing, this kind of technology close to nature, this kind of collaborative living where everyone gets a say in what happens. So there are already models out there of what's coming. So those business leaders who want to stay on top of things would, would be well worth their time to start to think about this stuff and learn about it because in a way it can help you predict the future because you know, just like our bodies heal, our consciousness is always healing itself back to unity. Everybody's on their own personal growth journey, moving through these terrains back to their own true self, which is their own infinite self in, in a connected place. And, and as a culture, we're also slowly healing back. We are evolving and growing. So it is inevitable that we'll keep moving in that direction. So it can give you some real understanding of what might be coming in our culture. And so just like the bricks and mortar uh, of, of old is now giving way to online, that's all very anticipated and predicted by this model. Uh, when I was young, I remember Encyclopedia Britannica was being sold door to door by everybody. Now you can't find it anywhere. Uh, you've got Wikipedia, you've got a whole different world of information happening. So by understanding this evolution and these trends, you'll be able to anticipate what is coming next and what is gonna be going extant. And we would encourage everyone watching to read our book, Introducing the 10 Terrains of Consciousness, because in that we give a very comprehensive understanding of each of these terrains and a global overview towards the end of the book about how things are, are holding in different prevailing terrains around the world and how things, trends that are, that are happening. So you'll be able to really get a good foundation of this. And of course, if any of your listeners are interested, we can be available to help them map uh, their product, their market, uh, their team, themselves, and their, their corporate culture so that, again, everything is in alignment. And if they want to reach out to us, they can email us at team at 10terrains.com. Mm, absolutely brilliant, because uh, I thoroughly enjoy, enjoyed meeting you both, by the way, and I applaud your great work. But I see so, how, so much how it's important important you know we're doing emotional intelligence with leaders consciousness with leaders and everything they want to know and they want to know where they are where they're going to it's almost like you've created a crystal ball for for business where they can see the way forward in true ways now before you leave the show can you give my viewers a final three top benefits on why they need to do the quiz to find out their own terrain and they'll find the quiz at your uh, domain there well, the first thing I would say that if by doing the quiz, you'll really get to know yourself better. You'll find out where you're at right now in your own personal journey of growth and evolution. And you'll be able to um, get a report, like a 40 page report that comes with the quiz. And it will show you the lessons that you're needing to learn at this point in your journey, the kinds of challenges that you might be facing and the kind of gifts that you're really here to give the world at this point in your journey. And that can bring you a huge amount of self-knowledge, which can be really, really powerful for you. 
And wow. fundamentally, this is gonna assist you to make choices that are really right for you at this point in your particular evolution, especially in your career path, health choices, because each of these terrains have different modalities around in health practices that are specific to them, and lifestyle choices. So it's, it's fundamental to be, again, in resonance and alignment with, with, uh, with who you are in order to find what's gonna be most effective to serve you. And we would actually say that it's worthwhile, not just for yourself to do the quiz, but get your employees and particularly your senior management team to do this quiz, because then you'll find out if you are all in alignment. And if you're not, it can actually help you dissolve some conflict and resolve some conflict because you can start to communicate better with each other in ways that each of you will understand because you really fundamentally understand where everyone's coming from. You can create so much more harmony and cohesion in the workplace. Mm. Well, in, in these very uncertain and uh, challenging times, you've got my mind buzzing about how businesses can now start to see the way forward. In this special BBTV web show, I've been talking to Alan David Reed and Tani Wolf, the dynamic team behind the 10 terrains of consciousness. Visit them at the URL. Thank you for both for being such inspiring guests. Exciting. Our pleasure. It's been so fun to talk with you. Yes, we're really enjoying this. Thank you.